It's just one of the slogans, like, not Tiger King and the dumb show you didn't know you needed. Yeah. Is this Tiki? It's a joke. The views and opinions expressed on this show are those of Greg and Justin and do not reflect the official position of the TikiCon producers. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> uh, Whatever it means, we're going to continue to put it up there in the beginning just to save our. Aloha! Our Aloha! And welcome to episode number of the Greg and Justin Show. <laughs> Coming to you now live and direct from the Sandy Bottom Tiki Lounge at, T at TikiCon HQ. Are we all looking uh, nice and clear or are we fuzzy? Or is that you? How many drinks have you had? I can't tell. Are we fuzzy? We're, yeah, we're a little grainy. A little grainy? It's film. It's because it's actually film. It's film grain. That's Ooh. it. <laughs> nice. Uh, so it's, I've got a bunch of people tuned in. Um, Cheers. Uh... Cheers, yes. Welcome. Welcome. We uh, always make a drink. You know, instead of me getting up and making a double, I just got out the big, huge tiki buckets here. <laughs> so it's a, huge. It's as big as our heads here, as you can tell. Yeah, there. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're as big as my head. Yeah. So, and because I made a ton of passion fruit syrup recently, uh, going back to the, uh, the good old dark magic. Uh, which is a take on the black magic that is at the Mai Kai. And this one is actually from uh, Craig Herman. Colonel Tiki. Uh, Colonel Tiki. Um, this is back in the Thatch days. And there maybe some of you guys remember the Thatch days. It's what was before Hale Pele. Different owner. And I used to work there on uh, Sundays and Mai Tai Mondays. Um, and served a lot of people there. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Craig was a bartender there for a while. And it made it to the official menu, the Dark Magic. And basically, um, it's been modified since those days. Um, but I like the original one. Um, but we've got the recipe here. Do you want to put it up on the screen? Just sure. so that people 
Get the drink out of the way. Um, dark Jamaican rum. Usually use like a Karuba, which is a really inexpensive but really good dark rum. But these that I made today actually have the Plantation OFTD, which stands for um, Old Fashioned Traditional Dark. It's a little overproof. <clears throat> So, you know, that little extra <laughs> little zing in your in your tiki step there. Um, and, yeah, I just made a bunch of passion fruit syrup recently from passion fruit puree. Uh, and this one, uh, Craig has updated, and it has the herb saint in it, little bits, which is kind of that licorice-y kind of um, NSA kind of a flavor to it. Uh, but it could be, it could be very overpowering so um depending on your taste level put as many drops in it as you know you feel comfortable with um so that's that is that the good old dark magic Cheers. so i'm getting reports that it's a little soft focus a little grainy i just cleaned off in front of the, the laptop camera a little bit but i, I think it's the connection sometimes it's been better sometimes it hasn't and you did something last time that actually kind of fixed it I don't know. Uh, I mean, we're sure. on we're on the five G network now, so hmm. this is as good as we can get for now. But hey, yeah, you know, it's two is one. And where do we get a passion fruit puree? So this okay. one is actually at um, you can get it at Cash and Carry in the frozen section. Um, they have some of it there. That one is passion fruit, but it's also mixed with like like white grapefruit, other things. Pretty inexpensive, but it's in a in a container, uh, plastic container, like juice bottle, uh, for like six or seven bucks. I went to um, to the maybe it's because of the yeah last time it was closer and because this is and in the, the laptop's blocking yeah okay yeah. so it's the light because yeah we don't so have this enough light yeah this needs to come in off on this side so that we can have that closer but we won't monkey with it now um and i also it should be coming any day i also got one of those little ring lights um we're getting so fancy next next thing you know we're gonna have selfie sticks i just got one well, why aren't we using it? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a laptop. You can't, can you imagine a selfie stick with a with a with a laptop? It's like well, well, no. I can, can I can hold it connect up. a second camera, or I can even oh. we can even go wireless with a phone. Hmm. With Fancy, this, yeah. Um, but uh, another place that I actually got the puree was in the frozen section, and it was at Restaurant Depot. And that's a place that you have to have a membership with. So, too, if you want to go or if anybody else uh, locally wants to go with me, um, maybe not so soon or maybe one person can go and get a bunch and stock up on it. And then, you know, just don't want a whole bunch of people going to the grocery stores. These times are. Um, but I can uh, get some there. And that's just pure passion fruit puree with no other juices or anything like that so. right and then he makes a syrup out of it and then i make the syrup out of it yeah so uh so bryn bryn is watching mm. from window to the magic hi, hi bryn. bryn rainy or not well hopefully they're not <laughs> darcy's hi darcy better grainy than rainy as i always say <laughs> so um the, 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 it's this weird time we live in where i'm getting more camera time than i ever have in my entire life <laughs> Right, like between the show, between daily hour-long work meetings or multiple meetings, uh, virtual happy hours, all this stuff going on, it's really cool. You're not getting zoomed out. No, I'm zooming in. <laughs> or, as someone I know would say, magnification. <laughs> um. Yeah, you totally made me lose my train of thought. Oh, just that you've been on camera a lot, and well, it's et cetera, et cetera. what's really amazing is how we've got now got like, got this cottage entertainment industry. Like people are either uh, bored or have too much time on their hands, or just they're like, it's like everyone's got their own community access cable channel now, right. which is kind of cool. That's something I always wanted to get into community access cable, yeah. but I never wanted to take the time to take the class and learn how to use the equipment and all that stuff and. Well, it's the fact that everybody's have to unplug a lot just from society and other distractions. So they're looking for community. Um, and this is the closest thing because you can't go out and actually see somebody face to face. So this is the next best thing. The closest thing is to see somebody face to face because it creates a certain chemical in your brain and it helps, you know, actually with anxiety. I've been doing a lot of reading of uh, the different things going on now to your emotional state and how to kind of manage with that and um, deal with that, et cetera. 
Um, and so, you know, that was one of the things that they said too, is it just, you know, somebody you trust, somebody that you, um, you know, want to talk to, do a FaceTime, do something with them. Um, you I know. used to hate net FaceTime. I would never do FaceTime. Yeah. And now I'm like, hey, you want to FaceTime? Hey, you want to get on Zoom? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't do FaceTime anymore because I'm not an iPhone user anymore. But um, I don't know if you saw uh, Marina's watching. Oh, Hi, hey, Marina. Marina. Hey. Hope you guys are doing okay nice. in Florida. Um, yeah. So, yeah, community access cable. Uh, I just thought that was interesting. Um, right. Now, as producers of a Tiki event, I kind of feel like it's our responsibility to kind of support the people who've supported us for all these years. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, as you've all seen, we've been doing a lot of, a lot in that regard, like uh, trying to buy art from artists and spread the word and share some of that art and give it away as prizes. And um, I just want everyone to know that, uh, that the stuff we give, we've been giving away on the show, although it's not huge value, uh, we've been buying that ourselves. That's not, donated it's like us really trying to support the community and yeah we really encourage you to do the same spend, if you're in if you're in a position to do so yeah spend 10 bucks here 20 bucks there it, right. a little bit helps well i saw something it's you know and it's it's hard in the balance to do it because there's convenience etc cetera, etc cetera. but it's like in these days and times you know who are you going to give your money to because giving your money to the people um that's local is going to matter the most because they're the ones that you know are are um have a, a huge chance of not surviving through this whole thing. You know, uh, the big corporations will, um, they always do. And it's the little guys that, uh, you know, unfortunately come and go uh, because of the way our uh, economic system is structured. So if you do have a couple of bucks to throw, I mean, it's even just like with the post office, you know, when, you, when it's the power of the numbers and the people and doing the math that everybody yeah. just went and spent, you know, $5, you know, at the post office, and that would, you know, help. But again, that's, I digress. That's well, a, we're set. That's not local. We're set on stamps for a while. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> but I mean, that's not local, but you know what I'm saying? It's well, like. No, it's local to everybody. Yeah. Like we all know mail carriers. We all receive mail. We're all affected by this if they were to go away or be privatized. Um, yeah. Ooh, you want to see the bling around our necks. Okay. Well, yeah. you've got your. Uh, I've got my Holly Pele uh, fire drinker medallion and we're going to be hearing from holly pele coming up here in a little bit yes yes and this is actually um a bosco pendant um that uh liza voodoo doll designs who does a lot of the hair fascinators um at tiki con the ones that you love um she created this necklace here uh for me so i got to put it with my my new shirt my three-quarter sleeved shirt here melissa if you're watching you're gonna appreciate this and then it's got the these cool little pockets here in the front but I love pocket. oh i don't have pocket. one pocket yeah yours is a zip up though which is yeah funny. it is it's yours is an ayolani one yep. but, but this is cool because it's got one little ones that's like little fish little turtles and then like little weird alien gecko-y things on it so anyways and boy do i need a haircut <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know in the future as, as things go on because um I've got lots of inventory and lots of shirts and dresses to sell. I may start uh, with this extra time just kind of putting some stuff online. So I'll update, you know, the viewers out there um, of any really cool things that uh, I'll be putting up for sale. On my, I do have an Etsy store. It's very, very thin. Not very much up there. <laughs> but I do actually have an Etsy store So called Time Tunnel Vintage. So, But I'll send all that out once I get to that point. All right, so we've got, well, we've got 63 viewers so far. Um, you're watching the Greg and Justin Show. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, coming up really soon here, we've got um, a little surprise from Holly Pele. And uh, we're going to mention our, one of our favorite takeout places, a couple of our favorite takeout places. Yeah. Um, we've got a special guest appearance from Colonel Tiki. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of talk about the Aloha Friday Challenge. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the show, we are giving away a $25 Holly Pele gift card. So here's how you can win. We're going to pick one person at random from all the comments. So all you need to do is make a comment during the show on the live stream. And we're going to run this little app that picks one person out of all of them at random. Uh, it doesn't help to comment more than once. It's just one person out of all of them. So just make one comment and we've got a $25 gift card for you. If you don't live in the area or don't expect to be in Portland anytime soon. We've made arrangements with Holly Pele uh, to give you a code for their website so you can order some glassware or they have one, I, I think 
the uh, Cannibal mug is only $25. Oh, awesome. Um, or if you really love Holly Pele, you can give it to them as staff love. It's basically their way to do virtual tips online. Right. And speaking of which, oh my goodness, I totally oh, forgot. Right. Did it put away? It was uh, sitting up there on the bar there. Oh, there it is. Yeah, right there behind the bar. Oh, but one thing too that I was thinking of, well, yes, well, first things first here. First things first. Whenever, <clears throat> whenever we make a drink that we would rather be drinking than our favorite tiki bar, we, put it, we give them a tip. Yep. And then save up a bit, 10, 20 bucks. And then uh, for Holly Paley, for example, we just go up to the website, we click that button on the store that says staff love, and then yep. that money goes to them and we can, and that gets shared among the staff. Yes. 100%. Yes. Well, and in the future, as this is expanding, you know, as we're only on the first few episodes, uh, I have a feeling there's going to be other guests on, oh, yes. uh, on the show, uh, making we drinks. Doing little stuff, but we're also, you know, kind of uh, going to solicit um, some certain things out there and let people know. Um, and one of the things I think would be really cool is if somebody could um, come up and, and give us a little video, a little how-to video on some really easy but fun garnishes um, that you can do. Because um, I'm feeling a little uh, oh. not actually that good at, at, at garnishes. So. We need to talk to Tiki Lindy about that. Oh. She did a whole symposium on garnishes last year at TikiCon. Oh, right. Okay. And she's supposed to be presenting this year. So. It does sound familiar. I never get a chance to go to those because I'm so busy. So let's see if she can do a little, uh, yeah. little yeah. three to five minute segment. Yeah. So we might be reaching out to some of you viewers, some of the people that we know on here who've got little little tidbitty things uh, to you know see if you're comfortable sending us a few minute video. So we'll uh as we go back through <laughs> this later we'll um joe says that was really strong we should tip double not just two dollars <laughs> there's a couple bills in here right 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 yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> this is just symbolic it is really symbolic. Uh, symbolic we've lost track so i just keep buying from them as much as i can right and keep using the same money in the tips here but but anywho yeah that's a great so, idea so I expect you know we might be reaching out to you um and and seeing if you're into sending over a little because uh you know, sure, it's it's uh, lots of fun to watch us uh, sit here and get drunk, but it's also fun to keep the community going and uh, all of you guys out there um, feeling like you're contributing and all that good stuff, too. So, And since we're on the subject of Holly Pele, huh? should we uh, see if Patty can wake up the, the volcano? Yeah. So, uh, I know. Where is Patty? I should have a little stick to be like, let's wake him <laughs> up like, like we would uh, have... Uh, <laughs> in the Enchanted Tiki room. <laughs> the siestas are getting shorter and shorter. They are. They are. All right. So uh, we asked um, Patty if he would put something together for us. And uh, let's see if I can find it. There it is. So over to you, Patty. Hi, everybody. This is Patty from Holly Pele. I hope you're all staying safe and keeping occupied, as well as managing to stay in good spirits. Usually we're here to help you a little bit with that last one. And I'm sure sorry that we can't be right now. We miss you all. One thing's for sure in these uncertain times, we're all very eager to get this crazy world back to normal and see you all on the other side of it. Be sure to follow us on Facebook for news and updates such as there are. Also, if you haven't seen it already, we have a new online store on the website, hollypele.com. You can make orders of our merchandise like mugs, t-shirts, glassware, pins. Also, we have discounted gift cards available as well as the option to make a donation directly to an aid fund for our staff. If you've already made purchases and contributions, I want to thank you very much. Every little bit is helping us to make it through. Now, even though Pele has been dormant in these last few weeks, I thought it would be fun to see if we can wake her up for a minute, get a taste of what we've been missing.
Now some bonus content for you. In all the years that I've been here, I've never seen anything to make me think that Holly Pele was haunted. But yet while we were making this video here, camera picked up something a little bit suspicious. Take a look. There, did you see that? All right, let's try something that seems to always work on TV. Zoom and enhance. Oh, yikes. All right, well, we'll get that sent down to the lab for some further analysis. Oh my God, that guy's got a, such a weird sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Who, hey, Patty or Patrick Swayze? Uh, both. Oh, okay. Yeah, it could have been worse. He could have been Rickrolled. <laughs> Uh, so don't forget, um, at the end of the show, we're going to be giving away a $25 gift card for Holly Pele. Um, you, all you need to do is comment on, on the, uh, live stream here. And we had someone ask, how do you comment? There should be just a, a field at the bottom where you just type it in. Um, we've got it set up so that we're watching the stream of comments come in and there's a little field right at the bottom. So just make sure to get a comment in there if you can. And uh, you will be entered to win the $25 gift card. Yeah. Gift card. So uh, we also wanted to give a shout out to Cliffs, Cliffs PDX. Yes. So if you're not aware of Cliffs, um, it is owned and operated by Sierra and Josh. And Sierra is a bartender at Holly Paley. Mm -hmm. um, amazing little restaurant. It's under the Wonder Ballroom. And they are completely shut down right now, except they are doing Friday takeout. And they have amazing food. Josh is the most amazing chef. So I just want to show you real quick what their takeout menu looks like. Um, it's the current one. They changed it up for this week, right? Yeah. Well, they said it's going to be the same menu. Wait, no. This is the current week. Yes. Oh, yeah, because it's got the grilled asparagus sandwich on yeah, there. Yeah, grilled asparagus like... sandwich. Uh, so there's a couple vegetarian options. There's a cheesy tomato. Um, the smoked fried chicken is amazing. And it's so big that you can get two meals out of it. Um, oh yeah, and the let's see this the steak and fries plate is terrible. Nobody order that, so there's enough left for us. <laughs> uh, especially with no, that. no, order it, order it. <laughs> no, <I'm laughs> Please do order it. Um, yeah, order it. Uh, we just have to make sure that we uh, order it early. <laughs> yeah, they start taking orders right at twelve thirty, so we'll be there at twelve. <laughs> it says twelve to six. I know. I'm trying to get them to come oh, in a little oh, later. Okay, gotcha. So we can get the steak bites. Gotcha. Um, but it's just the sweetest little place yeah. um, and the most wonderful people. And we really want to support them. They just opened up a few months ago. Yeah. And so an extended closure is really going to hit them hard. Yeah. They've already had to let all the staff go. So it's just Sierra and Josh working in there. Yeah. Well, and the social distancing is great. There's X's on there or they can bring it out to your car. No problem. Everything is totally cool and sanitary. And Oh, and if you've seen photos of Sierra, she's wearing her, her leopard print mask. She's got gloves. Like she's, she gets it. She's doing it right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you are completely safe. Other local places, not necessarily Tiki. Um, well, Normandy is sort of tiki just because Mindy used to work at Holly Paley. Yes, is Mindy, there. former bartender at Holly Paley, is now bartender at Normandy. Uh, amazing little French restaurant in the inner southeast. Yes. They're and also doing takeout. They're doing takeout. I think a lot, a lot of places are. Um, we haven't been getting takeout as much. Uh, so well, we don't, we just don't eat out a lot. Like, yeah. normally we would eat out once every two weeks or so. Um, yeah. And trying to save money and stuff. So true. And just going to the grocery store and getting a lot of stuff. And I really enjoy cooking. So I'm I'm doing all kinds of cooking and stuff. But uh, but anyways, support your local places that you like. There uh, was someplace else you wanted to mention. Um. Oh right right right. <laughs> if you like German food. Oh, Stamtish. Stamtish. Here Stam -tish. in Portland. I know Austin's oh, watching. So good. Yep. Oh, yep. He just says that with a question mark. Yep. <laughs> Stamtish. So, and they have now because, well, the OLCC is, I haven't heard yet that they're going to allow mixed cocktails that you can get to go um, during this. Um, that's really what's going to help a lot of these restaurants is if you could, you know, get your, right, because, get your cocktails. Right. Because they go. make most of their money off the booze. Right. But Stamtish, at least you can get a 64 ounce ball jar full of beer. Or so, two, or three. Or, yeah. <laughs> Which so it's I got $2 down for the, bot, for the jar. It's two bucks for the jar. But it's and all the amazing beers that they have on tap. It's yeah. got, the, got the window open there. Call, make your order. 
go get you know, the most amazing. Uh, we always get the either the schnitzel or oh, we the get the sour oh But gosh. they didn't have that on the um, to go menu, unfortunately. Yeah, sour not available for takeout, but. Right. The schnitzel and the spetzla and the red cabbage. They got pretzels. They've got oh um, they got that leek um, fondue, leek and, leek leek and, and fondue uh, like um, little pasta thing. It's kind of like a tortellini, or whatever. But so if you're just tuning in, oh. it's a Greg and Justin show, and we are drinking dark magics. Colonel Tiki. Hey, I didn't dark know magics. that. What's that? Oh, oh. that's been yeah. Oh wow, former sous chef. Well, we love that place, mm -hmm. and we're going to do everything we can to make sure that they are still around when the uh, when they can, when they're able to reopen. Yeah. So, anyways, the whole part of that little thing was to shop local. I'm sure a lot of you guys have got, gotten takeout from all, all your cute little places wherever you are. Um, so, how's your drink doing? It. I don't think we're drinking fast enough. Are we drinking fast enough? <laughs> Remember, I made these double pluses. <laughs> okay. So, um, oh, and Kim's on there too, Kim. Yes, I think uh, it was last time that we talked about um, uh, going and getting uh, wine from uh, Burnt Bridge. Yes, oh yes. Another, uh, if you want, if you want to venture over, this is the best time to venture over the bridges because there's no uh, commuter traffic. So hop over into downtown Vancouver. If you are a wine drinker, some of the best wine you'll ever have is at Burnt Bridge. And you can call it in. I got some specials going on, some of, of the uh, staff picks and stuff, and yeah. just open up your trunk. They'll just put it right in your trunk, and but, you're good to go. But just make sure to check their website or Facebook page. They have limited hours. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's limited amazing. hours on that. There, but, uh, there is not a single wine from from there that we don't thoroughly enjoy. Absolutely. So it's it's a safe bet. Definitely a safe bet. I know, we're, and we're running low on that case, so we might have to go and get some more soon from, from them. <laughs> Um, and uh, speaking of Kim, um, Kim, you should do you, you should do some kind of online show, some cooking thing. Yeah, uh, I totally socially distant help you set that up. <laughs> Cause, yeah, because we have yet to go to one of her cooking classes. Right. Well, maybe maybe just a little appetizer thing that's like really simple and easy, and you know. Yeah, it could be. This would be a great time to promote for the cooking school. Yeah, five or ten minutes, a uh, little blip. I mean, we can definitely you know. The more time that we have other people doing stuff, the less time you gotta <laughs> sit here and listen to us flapping our gums. But see, they really want to see us get drunk. That's the thing. Well, yeah. I mean, we're, I'm going for I'm going at a pretty good speed here. Well, that was the thing is that um, Henrik had said before, like you know, start drinking half an hour beforehand. I did. Which helps. Oh, were you doing shots? No, I wasn't doing shots this time. But I oh. had a, I had a uh, rum spritzer earlier. Oh, okay. Um, and speaking of little blips and other people's content. Uh, we have a video segment from Colonel Tiki, Craig Herman. Yes, which I know is watching. He's watching. I know, and so is his wife. <laughs> yes, they, he, he said hi to her. They must be in other parts of the house. All right, so let's see if I can get this rolling without wrecking anything. So this is this is one of the, the, the kind of how-tos. It's like a educational Tiki stuff. Right, right. So yeah, let me just preface this a little bit. So um, we've seen a lot of videos of bartenders making a very specific drink. And that's hard because it's a pandemic and you shouldn't be running out to get that one syrup or that one ingredient that you really need to make this recipe perfect. Right. But, you know, if you do it strategically, that once every two or three weeks that you make that time to go to the grocery store safely, true, you can stock up on stuff and it, get well, a few things. If you're not running around town to find something, like certain syrups are hard to find or you make them yourself or... True. But uh, we wanted some content that was a little more educational, a little more theory-based, a little more ethereal. And Colonel Tiki's the guy. <laughs> oh, they are sitting next to each other. How funny. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Justin, should I start the video? You know, every time that I, when I used to work at a service industry, especially at, at Trader Vic's, and I go to a table, and there's two people that are sitting right across from each other, obviously on a date, and they're like, both like this, not talking to each other, I would always go up and I'd be like, are you guys texting each other? <laughs> and they would laugh and everything like that, but I'd be like, that's really lame. Don't don't do that. Not when you're out on a nice dinner, especially when you can tell that they just they just it's like their first or second date. Yeah, that's when it makes it uncomfortable. Yeah, but, you know, if you've been together forever, like well, you and I have, we yeah, can here I'll just text you now. No, but you're, you're on a date. You take the phone. You go like this. Done. Anyway. anyway, all right. So with that, we are going to turn it over to Colonel Tiki. I 
didn't see you there. Welcome to the Monkey Hut. Well, I know these times have been trying for a lot of us, so I thought a great thing would be for me to be able to help you with some simple tips that might make your experience easier. With all of us stuck at home, it's hard to decide what kind of a drink to make or even what drink to make. We've got lots of books, uh, lots of recipes to look through, but uh, do you have those recipe ingredients on hand? Well, to talk about hands, I thought I would help you out with a couple of different tips. Today we're going to talk about punch, and then I'm going to talk you through a very simple syrup that you can make uh, to help make new interesting drinks or things that you have just lying around in your kitchen. Punch. So, you can make your own recipes at home without needing to look through books um, by keeping a simple mnemonic in mind, and that is punch itself. Punch comes from the Punjabi word punch, which means five. Between you and me, I don't know if that's even true or not, if it's from Punjabi for five, but I like the story, so let's just go with it. One part sour, two parts sweet, three parts strong, four parts weak, plus spice. Using that formula, you can make your own drinks. And I'd like to thank Jeff Beach Bumberry for teaching this aspect to me. Um, punch has been around for quite a long time, um, but this application of punch as it pertains to tiki drinks, it was elucidated by him to me at Hukilau in 2006. And so none of us would be here making these drinks if it weren't for Jeff Berry. One part sour. Sour can be anything you like that is sour, but mainly, lemon juice, lime juice, or grapefruit juice. Grapefruit juice, half sour, used twice as much. Two parts sweet. Sweet, sweet, we're talking about syrups, or sweet fruit flavors. Three parts strong. Strong, we're talking mostly about rum. Beautiful rum. Plus spice. Spice, here we're talking bitters, extracts, or other spices that are already in your sweet syrups. Now, to make it even simpler, you can just worry about the three parts. One part sour, two parts sweet, three parts strong. Your sour and your sweet always match that liquor. So, if you like something a little uh, less sweet, you can use more sour. As long as the addition of your sour and your sweet match your liquor, your formula is pretty much set. So you can quickly make that, add ice, shake it, stir it, however you will, pour it up, pour it over rocks. Um, it's up to you. Um, now, I would also like to take this time to go into the magic world and show you how to make your own syrup at home, just from ingredients you have in the kitchen. And here's my kitchen. You'll notice I have my castor sugar ready and a lovely pineapple we'll be using later. I particularly use a two to one recipe when I make my syrups. This enables a very long shelf life as it's a high osmotic pressure. And it also has another benefit of being the same volume as of regular sugar. So one teaspoon of sugar equals one teaspoon of two to one syrup. So I have measured out two cups of regular castor sugar and one cup of water. Add these two to a pan on your stove. I like adding the sugar after the water because it has this wonderful effect of the water slowly seeping into the sugar. Put it on high. There it goes. Very carefully stir and you'll be slowly bringing this up to the boil is useful if you have an electric range as I do. Nice slow heating. As you're stirring you'll notice that the mixture goes from gritty to cloudy and eventually as the sugar melts into the water it will eventually become clear. As soon as you start it starts to bubble turn it down a bit so it doesn't get out of control. You can even remove it from the heat like that if you wish. Here, you can see it's getting to a nice, clear syrup. You can turn the heat off at this point and continue to stir until it gets clear. And that's your simple, rich, two-to-one syrup.
So, it's as easy as that. Two parts sugar, one part water, bring it to the boil. You can just put that through a strainer and you've just got regular old rock candy syrup that you can use in a Mai Tai or use in any other uh, uh, cocktail that you need some sort of sweetening to. Um, however, maybe you've got something lying around like we had lying around you may have seen and that is a pineapple. So I'm going to make a pineapple syrup, a quick pineapple syrup that'll add just that extra little taste to a daiquiri or some other sour that you might like to make. And that is done this way. Pineapple syrup is a delicious syrup you can make really quickly and this is just me cutting up the core from a pineapple that I'd previously made, which you saw in the other video, uh, cut up into pieces. Uh, this is the core of which I am cutting up. I add this to the syrup, which we've just made, and you'll turn the heat back up to high because we want to bring the syrup back up to the boil and we're going to steep these pineapple pieces. Now to give a little bit of extra flavor, in this case I am choosing to add a stick of cassia cinnamon. It has a great punch and I'm just going to be putting it in the syrup for a short time. So I want a big hit of the coumarin in the cassia cinnamon. Once it gets to a nice rolling boil like this, you'll stir it up for a little while longer and then turn the heat off. Keep stirring until the comes down, put the top back on it, and put it off the heat and let that steep. Once it's steeped for about two or three hours, you'll take the top off, make sure it's nice and cool, and we're going to, we're going to pour that through a sieve into a bowl. Now for an additional extra flavor, I'll be adding 1 8 teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I have a pineapple vanilla syrup and also cinnamon. We'll pour that again through a sieve into a mason jar and be sure to label it so you know what it is. Keep it in the fridge, it'll last six months. So I hope these tips put a little joy in your heart and help to these trying times. Have a drink on me. Oh, 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 it's back on. Oh, it's back on. Oh, jeez. <laughs> So the punch recipe has saved us on many occasions. Um, it's such a simple formula. It you is. Can, you can use it with what you've got in the cupboard right. with some basic rules. And I remember uh, a few years ago, I would just come down here and just start making punches. And right. what You could do almost anything as long as you stick to that formula. Well, and that's what makes it so good, too, because, and, and that was awesome that you did show how to do the pineapple syrup, because if, in this drink alone, I had to make the passion fruit syrup which was with a simple syrup and passion fruit puree. And then I also made the coffee syrup. Last time I made these drinks, I actually had the Koloa uh, coffee rum, which you right. know is, is made with real coffee, but has a little extra kick to it. Um, oh, someone can see the OFCD bottle. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that for? Oh, I don't know. But, but so I had to make the coffee syrup and, you know, guess who I reached out to because I was going to make this drink, yeah. his drink, and uh, Craig was nice enough to uh, show me or tell me, you know, via text, how he does his coffee syrup. But and syrup, I did this with uh, cold brew. So simple to make, and it's super awesome because you can experiment with it using that formula and be able to, you know, um, put it in there and all kinds of stuff, and then, you know. If you make a pineapple syrup, pour it over ice cream. Right. You know, put it in uh, a, a, as a spritzer with, you know, some, some. Get get adventurous and throw some cinnamon in it. Or, right. You know, exactly. there, and there's much more complex spice blends that I would love to have Craig talk about in a future episode. Cause... I think it's time to put a little uh, floater on. Top. All right. Yeah. We got a floater, folks. Floater. All right. Woo. Oh, we should grab some pineapple to put on her umbrellas with. Oh, I know. So you are watching the Greg and Justin show, and we are about halfway drunk by now. Um, 
a little more than halfway through the show. No, yeah. a lot more than halfway through the show. I think we're running out of stuff to talk about. Yeah, I mean, it's just a place for uh, people to get together. And we're just we're hanging out with the people we love and chat on here. Back together. Uh, I, I'm a little zoomed out, so um, but we may try to do a Zoom thing um, in a different way. Perhaps we could try it one time where we can do a Zoom and then everybody's muted, but then you have to raise your hand. But we'd be monitoring that a lot. But well, I don't know. It's, it could would, be complicated. What would be really cool is if we did some kind of panel discussion over Zoom, but broadcast it through here. True. So, like, you know, we've got four or six little boxes of people who with stuff to say. You know, I don't know what kind of, what kind of panel it would be. And then we broadcast it through the streaming system. Right. Or, yeah, some or kind of... Or just a... having live guests yeah. instead of pre-recorded segments. Live guesses and bring them down here? No, no, no. As in, we put them on Zoom on another screen, and then I can oh, right. I can overlay it yeah. using the software, so we're side by side. Right. Yeah, there's yeah, there's that. I mean, because otherwise this... we've got like a 30-second delay. <laughs> yeah, because there's like, yeah, because Zoom, I don't know, it's been a hit or miss thing. Each of the ones that I've been in recently have been either everybody's muted or, you know, some people are, some people aren't. There's certain etiquette. You know, there's this and that, and then sometimes you can see how it just kind of like, if you kind get, of becomes a shit show. If you get more than ten or twelve people, it gets really unmanageable. Right. So it's like keeping it down, and we've we're up to over seventy people now. So, I oh yeah, you know, can you imagine seventy people chiming in? Right. <laughs> yeah. 70, <laughs> no, be, seventy drunk people. I hope you guys have been drinking. I hope, I hope we're not of, alone here. It'd be the sort of thing where you're watching it, and you have a little icon, you can raise your hand. And then we right. turn your audio on if you have a question. That's that's right. How the, that's how the Portland City Council is holding council meetings right now. So they're right. using Zoom, and people can phone in, and then they get an opportunity to testify. Right, testify, testify. <laughs> no, even we could do a call in. We could have somebody call in and actually like put their. Um, we have these little mics that are up here. We can uh, put the put our cell phone up there. Are the mics down far enough. Long time uh, listener, first time caller. <laughs> I mean, we need to get the boom mic in the shot, like in the TV shows, you know, that, there it is. All right, boom mic yeah. in the shot. <laughs> uh, so, um, what else has been going on? Aloha Friday Challenge. Yeah, it's it's building, it's growing, it's a... Uh, watch out, your microphone is almost hitting your head there. <laughs> oh, you're doing that on purpose, okay. You can't even you can't even see it, though, you because really can't, the, yeah. the dark background, but yeah. you can probably... Oh, gosh, sorry, that was loud. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, don't, uh, don't do that. Okay. Um... And then she moved it up. Otherwise, that would be a well, now I got it over here. Right. Pull on it. <laughs> no, that's yours. And we're working on. Uh, we're as so you can tell, as you can tell, we actually changed this around by how many degrees did we shift this? Oh yeah, you get to see a whole other forty-five degrees of the sandy bottom. And we're going to keep doing that as we've kind of cleaned up in here, gotten a lot of things in order. There's going to be new projects. I think we're going to be opening up one of the walls in here. Which was not full of mold, thankfully. We had a little water leak issue a right. while back. I was so worried that we were going to open up that wall and it's all full of mold. And after our, our beetle infestation, oh, right. man. Yeah. So that's, that's taken care of. The bamboo up. has been uh, brought up here. A little bit of The bamboo has been bamboozled. Yes. And so that wall, as soon as you, if those of you who have been in the bar, as soon as you walk into the bar, there, that wall that is along, um, it basically is between that and the bathroom, and the, inside that wall is where all the pipes are. They go upstairs to the bathrooms, everywhere. And we're gonna crack that baby open. It actually just, it doesn't have drywall, it just has uh, paneling, some really thin uh, paneling. So we're gonna rip that out, make it to where it's pretty accessible, but also have some recessed. Um, Make uh, some nice, like, mug depth shelving. Yeah. Yeah, and put some lighting and stuff like that. So, but that's also by the door. So we might want to invest in some um, museum putty. So as drunkards are stumbling out of here, they don't not. I feel of well. Yeah, I feel much better about it because that whole um, shelving unit was over there, and I was Sticking always worried. Out, yeah. You know, all the really prized mugs were going to get knocked over. <laughs> so, and I, and I hope you're all using your top shelf mugs during this pandemic because you know you're stuck at home drinking. You're not going to the tiki bars. When else are you going to use them? We should have discussed this before we went on camera because these are just these. I could have pulled out some better mugs. <laughs> but it's the tiki right, well. <laughs> bowl. It seems so perfect. The tiki bowl. The tiki bowl. Hey, I'm, I'm not complaining. 
Oh, hey, well, Wait. speaking of tiki bowls, we actually have volcano bowls here. We can always uh, do a little bit of fire here in the sandy bottom. I can always do one. We've got those um, long straws. We could sit back and do that. You know, hardly any of this is fireproofed. <laughs> we should, that's... I Actually, I did spray all that before I put it up. Right. Uh, the bamboo's just wood. I mean, it wasn't sprayed or anything. But here's this grass skirt right up here we might want to think about. Yeah. Fireproofing well, before we... It's not going to be like at Holly Pele. Like, oh, I know. It's I just going to be like... It's like when you go to Trader Sam's and it's like that. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, it's little, just a little, little, pinch. little pinch that you go in there like that. Yeah, plexiglass would be a good idea too um, to put it up there. But, mm. you know, it's just uh, reassessing everything. A tiki bar is never done. This room has been... It's like a, a domino effect. Once you put one thing up... You know, or you get one new thing. Like now, because we've got the, the new um, Frog Island Tiki's, um, I had the Tiki one that we showed off last week or the week before. Yeah. Um, I'm having to figure out the perfect place to put it, and then it's a trickle down. Everything else has got to move around. But now the Tiki is going out into the main room out there. Um, See, we started something. Now people want, to, want us to show off our favorite mugs of the week. Oh, right. <laughs> I mean, maybe that needs to be a new segment. Yeah, I... I yeah, we are we are we are getting pretty close to the end of the hour, though. Not true. that we have to end right at, at eight, but true, true. But I want to uh, talk a little bit about Aloha Friday Challenge because okay. it's really making me happy, and okay. I made a little slideshow of all the images that I found from last Friday. Perfect. I'll go grab one of my uh, okay. a, a favorite mug, and right. then uh, while you talk about that, and grab my favorite mug too. <laughs> Um, so Aloha Friday Challenge. I, I am so thankful to all of you for all the photos you're posting. Um, I, it's even starting to spread. Like I'm starting to see people who aren't necessarily TikiCon fans or, uh, you know, friends of friends or, or even bosses of friends at work starting to get into it. It's so amazing. I want to see this thing spread faster than a virus and get everybody wearing Aloha shirts on Friday and, and we make the, the world a more colorful place one Hawaiian shirt at a time, or dress, or socks, or whatever you got. So uh, with that in mind, um, I made a little slideshow of all the Aloha Friday photos that I could find from this past Friday. And uh, I apologize, there's no music for this, so I'm just gonna talk over it. I think we've got two photos per second, so we're just gonna skip through him through them here real quick. There are probably some repeats. Uh, there may be a couple that aren't actually Aloha Friday challenging people that we know, but just happen to use that same hashtag. But I mean, look at all these. These are so great and so creative. And I love each and every one of you for posting one of these. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, they can still hear me. <laughs> I, we need to really invest. Oh, there's I saw Sissy. <laughs> we need to invest in some uh, royalty-free music. And Greg and his husband, Sean. Wait, do I was, have do I have, have this on loop? You have two on two of Sean. Yeah, there's it's. <laughs> now I've seen the same one three times of Sean. You know, I may have accidentally put this on on freak out. Yeah. On Yeah, I've seen Craig. Because well, I know now. Craig submitted three different photos or posted three different photos. Oh, All okay. right, so I'm just gonna have to stop. <laughs> Some of these look like that they're from last week too. You know, I I don't have a really good way to um, okay to aside from clicking into every single post and checking the date. Mm -hmm. Facebook only lets you search by month and hashtag. Oh. And Instagram, you have to go through some weird third party tools to. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, you yeah. think of some of these like really simple things with Facebook it would be really easily accessible. Well, they are if you want to pay. No, oh. there's plenty of services of where I can pay. You know, well, I couldn't find any that were to unlock the things that used to be. Well, like, they're like normal. marketing companies. It's like, hey, we can track you all your hashtags and give you all the demographics, and it's only forty nine ninety five a month. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, if it was five or ten bucks a month just to be able to track a couple of hashtags, I'd totally do that. I I really miss the fact that it's been it's been a while where it would actually have. On the timeline, it's you know been years since they've really done that. Where you could actually see, you could be like, okay, 
July of 2012, I know that I went on vacation here, so let me go specifically to that place to find the photos that I posted. I, I think you might be able to do that, but it's... It's janky. Really, it's janky and it's hard to find. And it's hard to like figure it all out. Anyway. But while we're still on the subject of Aloha Friday, uh, just to remind you all the rules. Um, there's really three main rules. You post a photo of yourself in some kind of Aloha wear. It doesn't necessarily need to be a current photo. It could be a previous one. But the whole point of this is to get people excited for it and get you out of bed and showered and shaved and right. you know, put it on some Put it on your best clothes on Friday and feeling good. Like, you know, don't stay in your sweats and just post a photo from three years ago. Right. You can if, if you're having you a really can. bad Friday. I mean, if you're having a really bad Friday and you have a really great moment where you're like, oh my gosh, I remember when I was in the beach on Kauai and I was wearing, you know, this really cool, you know, caftan and I was feeling really good and I really wish I was there. That's that's perfectly fine. Right. Or yeah. Or from your wedding, if you had a tiki wedding, that's perfectly fine. Um, and they count. That. They'll count. They'll totally count. But yeah. the whole point of this is to get you, you know, excited yeah. and, and you know, get it fresh yeah. and, and getting your coworkers fun. involved and getting your friends and family involved. Right. Um, so that's the first rule. It's a photo of yourself. Um, to be eligible for the for the contest, it needs to be a photo of you. Um, but if you're just posting for fun, you know, it doesn't matter. Right. So the second rule, rule number two, rule number two is that uh, you need to add the hashtags. Aloha yes. Friday Challenge and TikiCon. Yes, and I have had to, and I've just, you know, in my friends list, there's been a few people that as I'm scrolling through, they've gone and they, through the effort and it's super, uh, I applaud them and everything, and then I see that they don't do the right hashtag. So I'll actually um, go in on the comment and, and hashtag it um, as and, and tag them so that they'll see it so that the next time they won't. Now, to be fair, some people, not everyone's making their, their photos public, and not all of them are adding the hashtags, maybe because they want to keep them kind of private. They may not be doing this to necessarily win. They just want to do it to participate. Oh, well, I, I, I totally understand that. But at least the one person that I know has no problem with uh, okay. it being public. Um, so it was just a, it was just a you know, but, forgetting the, the actual hashtag. Because there is, I, I will hashtag Aloha Friday, Happy Aloha Friday, um, and also Aloha Friday Challenge. Oh, yeah. Uh, Plus Tiki right. So I'll do all those ones, but the official one is uh, uh, Aloha Friday Challenge. And right. That's the one that we're tracking. Uh, with the, with right. The, and those are the two hashtags that you must have in order to be eligible to win the prize at the end. And you must not miss a week. So you have to go to, to be eligible to win at the end, the grand prize, which we're going to draw at random from all the eligible people. You have to have started on... March 20th and go all the way to July 31st. That's 20 weeks without missing a week. That's the challenge. Right. And the grand prize, we're gonna of everyone who um, who makes it that far, it's gonna be a random drawing, and they're gonna win either two of the Tiki Con mugs by Van Tiki, or a $100 Holly Paley gift card, or uh, let's see, I. Think Think it's priority access to yes that's it that's what we said it was priority access for VIP tickets or super tickets for next year and a hundred dollar credit um, and then is that the third rule or, or no we're in the fourth rule so the other thing in order to be eligible to win is that your photos have to be public and they cannot be in your um, in your story they have to be in your feed well, you can do them in your story too, but yeah. put them in your feed because we're going to go back in August and we're going to have to search for them. And if they're in your story, we're not going to be able to find them. Yeah. It's got to be on your feed in public so that we can find all these and verify them. Right. Well, and it's just a really creative way. I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I have been, I've been bad, you know, um, because I was doing my Aloha Friday where I would go and tour property, a really cool mid-century property. Well, now because of all this, it's a little more difficult to be touring properties um, but I'm still looking for the opportunity to do that, but I haven't actually done it the past two days, two weeks. What are you looking for? <laughs> you hit it, didn't you? Yes! <laughs> so, um, so basically, yeah, so, but, but it's being creative. It's like a, you know, go for a walk. I'm like, you know what? If I'm not going to her house and I don't have it planned for that day, I need to put on my brightest Aloha shirt and go for a walk in the neighborhood. 
and smile and wave at everybody and yep. like you know brighten people's day and that's the kind of creativity we're you know looking for you know um yeah do you if you if you need to do it that way it's like do it that and way. if you need to pick me up if you need your day brightened the best way to brighten your day is to brighten someone else's day it's true and that's that's why we're doing a lot of the stuff we're doing because I'm a softie. I am so soft hearted. I would be wrecked by everything that's going on if we weren't like yeah, putting ourselves out there and really trying to share and make people's lives better. Right. So uh, just a few more things on the Aloha Friday challenge. Okay. Uh, the one last <coughs> thing I wanted to mention Friday. is no matter whether you make the, the 20 week challenge for every eligible Friday that you post a photo, we're going to donate $1 to charity. And that's going to be split between Pride Northwest, which was our original charity recipient. They do the, the uh, Portland Pride Festival. But because of the whole pandemic, we're going to sl split that in half. And the other half is going to go towards charities that support people that are really uh, struggling with the pandemic. We haven't figured out who that's going to be yet. Right, right. Maybe a food bank. It may be support for service industry workers. We're not sure yet. Just wherever those dollars can do the most good. Oh, awesome, David. I'm going to uh, pour of OFTD while watching. That's... That's what we've got uh, within okay, arm's yeah. reach here. For 69% overproof, that you can just sip that stuff. It's so good. Yeah. It's, a, it's a little hot, but it's oh, it's so good. A little bit. But it's not funky hot, which is, right. which is good. It's not like the rum fire or one of the other ones. So we're getting down to the end of, end of the show. Um, oh, Tommy is now watching. Tommy's getting close to the end. Uh, don't worry, Tommy. We've got some other stuff uh, planned for next week. So yeah, we we can give a little tease, at yeah, the, at the end there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we had someone ask about our favorite mugs of the week. Right. Well, so for this week, so I know we're gonna make some little little off season. We're gonna make some people jealous. I know, but <laughs> but but as I was setting up, because um, you, you some of you know me know that I DJ, and it's been a while since I've done it, and I'm setting up, um, getting everything reset up in the basement here to do some DJing uh, soon. Might actually integrate it into the show a little bit um but get everything all set up there so that was kind of my project today and i had this um one of our led lights and it has a setting on it that has black light and so when it was shining up over the curtains it was also shining on these mugs which <clears throat> you can be pa and i'll be ma <laughs> so with the matching swizzles so you know yes the official disneyland haunted mansion if you if you've been to the haunted not mansion mugs, before not you, tiki but not tiki but mugs. wonderful mugs wonderful mugs and then actually right here is glow in the dark it has glow in the dark paint and it says 33 on it and on yours it says it right there so anyways that was something that i noticed and i was like a, 33, i man. thought i heard about this but hadn't actually seen it in in real life and it was pretty awesome so and then here's the matching the matching swizzle that goes with it. So super super awesome. So so anyways, this is the ones of the week, and um, I should have poured this in there, but the bucket just seemed like I just wanted a bucket. Well, if we're still doing this show at Halloween, we can uh, make some drinks in these. Oh, absolutely. So I just wanted to um, mention. Uh, I think Michael came in and said more bullhorn. Um, a second ago when I said, where is it? You <laughs> hit it. I, that, I meant the bullhorn. He hid the bull, bullhorn. I wanted to show you all just how annoyed he gets when I pull it out. But <laughs> it is now put away and the batteries are probably taken out. Yeah. But I will get I will get that bullhorn back on the show. Well, we have to figure out another way to do a shout out. That's not... Uh... We'll have you leave the room and then I'll do it. How's that? <laughs> yeah, that thing just... It's like... Fingernails on a chalkboard. Game. It is. And the <laughs> fact that it is and that you all keep pushing it is really kind of annoying. <laughs> like, oh, I'm sorry you don't like nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> there, let me put nails on a chalkboard. Uh, um, so we're getting towards the end of the show. I just want to make one more mention that we are giving away a $25 Holly Paley gift card. And all you need to do is make a comment during the live stream, which is coming close to an end. Um... And we're going to do a random drawing, and I think I might be able to do it live at the end here. Oh. Um, do you want to do it that way, or do you just want to uh, reach out to the person later? Who was I, the, did you, you already sent off in the mail the person who was actually a, a, someone who lives in Canada. 
Yes. And you one got that in, sent one off. One in Jen Bain, yes. Uh, so you got that sent off this week. Yep, and that's on its way to Canada, I hope. I'm using some new shipping method that was a little bizarre to me, but it's all through ShipStation. So it's kind of a test because we've never really done shipping to Canada. Right. You got a couple of people. Uh, I know Zoya is, is watching, and um, uh, I think Shawnee was, maybe Michelle, I'm not sure. Uh, but we do definitely have our, uh, our contingent up there in Canada watching. So we're, you know, if you're a winner, we'll definitely be... Uh, have it more streamlined as far as that goes with the sending it off to you. Yeah. Yeah, there's Johnny. So I don't know if this is going to work. No, this, okay, this this picking thing, I've, I've I found a website that will go to a Facebook post and, is that the cat up there? Man, that cat's got heavy footfalls. Um, go to It'll go to a Facebook post and pick a person at random, but it's, I need to reload it mm -hmm. and read. I configured it beforehand, but it, it's not dynamic. So right. what we'll do is we will announce the winner in next week's show. Yes. So that will get everyone to want to tune in Yeah. again next week. Yeah. I think that maybe that could be a good way to start the shows from now on. Oh, with the winner. Yeah. See, we're still figuring this out. <laughs> we're still figuring it out. Uh, we're glad that, you know, uh, 70 people have uh, tuned in tonight. Um, but, yeah, look for more... Uh, stuff in there. Uh, we want to really continue with the community. Um, I know y'all like sitting watching us get drunk and and being dorks and whatnot, but it is really about community. So we want to um, uh, reach out to you guys as well and have you doing Post little con comment. contributions. Post comment. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think um, the Holly Pele segment and the Colonel Tiki segment is probably the highest production values that this show has seen to date. <laughs> right. Uh, and thank you for that, uh, Patty and Craig. Thank you so much. Yes, for absolutely. Making us look much better than we were. I know. I mean, I was really surprised. I, but, you know, I, surprised but not surprised, too, because um, I haven't played enough with um, just even on my iPhone. The iMovie has, has a lot of powerful tools to it, you know. Remember the days when After Effects and, uh, you know, circa 1998 when we met and the kind of, you know, technology we were dealing with back then and how expensive and... All the stuff you had to do just to make a, a, a stupid little video. And now we have the power to be able to do really awesome looking, high, you know, high production value looking professional stuff. Oh, and you know just what? By putting, just by putting a camera on ourselves and doing a little editing. Uh, you know what we'll be doing next week or the week after is making that uh, frozen pineapple treat recipe that's been going around from Disneyland. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, the, that's the one the that list. everyone's like, oh, my God, that's not the official recipe. It's <laughs> like, no, no, no. Disneyland didn't say it was the official recipe. All the freaking media outlets were like, oh, it must be official. Right. Now it's yeah. the official one is powder from a bag in a, in a soft serve machine. This is ice cream and pineapple and pineapple juice. It's, it's right. you know, the closest facsimile you can make at home without... Oh, can we put some OFTD on top? Why, yes, we can. Nice. Just as, like, we maybe we, we uh, are in the park. That's They're starting to do that now, right? Uh, well, you have to go over to the hotel. Open, but, oh, in the hotel, okay. But you uh, can actually order it, and they can give you the rum instead of it being in your bag. Yes, although just to be true to form, I think that when we do it on the show, we should pour it from our flasks. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it used to be that there was a coffee stand over the Disneyland Hotel. It was the only place you could get it. But I believe mm. now Tangaroa Terrace might be serving it. I thought there was some place. I don't know. I get a lot of updates also from what's going on in Disney World from all my friends that live in Florida. And I know there's some different stuff that's going on in Florida than there is um, in Disneyland and Anaheim. Um, so they may have some other outlets where you can get it over there. Their liquor laws might be different. Who knows? But regardless, you know, we can we can do our own little uh, little float. And uh, speaking of Disneyland, um, well, we're we're over an hour mark here. Uh, we should probably do one last shot to finish out the show. Do you want it to be OFTD or should it be something else? You oh, choose. let's just do OFTD just to make the fans happy. All right. And then um, I want to end things with a very short video clip from the Disneyland Resort that is uh, Tiki themed or Polynesian themed um, from 2016, I believe. Okay. I'll be really but bad. first. I'll be really bad and I'll use our, our, our um, 33. Oh, just rub it in their faces. Shot glasses since we were just showing the uh, <laughs> other ones that were going on. 
That's where. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. They're calling. Shot. 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 Oh, sissy, I'm so sorry that you're not in Disneyland right now. I know. We all wish we were in Disneyland right now. I think. And we were there. We were there in January, which may have been the last time, or close to the last time that things were normal in Disneyland. Like. Oh, she's reopens, supposed to be in Disneyland right now. Yeah. I see. I saw that. Um, when it reopens, everything's going to be different. At yeah. least at first, like there's yeah. going to be virtual queues for a lot of rides. Uh, they may be checking your temperature as you enter the park. Well, for that matter, restaurants may be checking your temperature anywhere. It just is a way to be able to reopen. But anyway, that's, yeah, I just, that's, that's I just doom and gloom. I don't want to think about that. I know. It's too weird to think, how are they going to check your temperature? Uh, <laughs> they, they, they've got like a thing they can point at you. Pew, pew. <laughs> it, pew, pew, <laughs> pew, pew. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Buzz light years. Yeah, they'll use the Buzz Lightyear guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I hope you guys um, like our our Wednesday show now instead of Friday. Too much competition. Um, but and again, we'll see. Like, sorry, Neil and Carla. I know yes. you can't watch live, but you can right. watch the reruns. Right, right, right. And uh, we'll have to do something special for them somehow um, to that, that'll make them laugh or whatever when they watch it tomorrow. Okay. Um, so, so cheers, everybody. Cheers to you all. Mm-mm, OFTD. Am I doing shots? You guys understand that we aren't teenagers, that we actually sip it. Or at least do two or three well, drinks. We are we don't shoot sipping a shot. Well, yeah, come on. This is also like overproof. This is 69 I mean, you can... Uh, you can do a shot, you can shoot a shot, or you can sip a shot. Right. I so like, it's still, I like it the is flavor. a shot. I like the flavor. Yeah, I mean, we're just, still doing a shot. Yeah, and it's, this isn't freaking Cuervo or something that you just got to gag down right. any way you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, I think with that, we're going to close out with a little bit of um, a little bit of Polynesian dancing. I think this is a Tahitian dance from Disneyland. So uh, don't right. forget to comment. You've got about... 30, 40, 50 seconds left to comment if you haven't already to, to be entered to win that Holly Paley gift card. And, uh, oh, uh, coming up next week, we've got some stuff from Lemba. We want to show okay. uh, our sure. sponsor, Lemba, Lemba Rum. Yes. Um, we hopefully will have some other some other guest clips coming up. Uh, and you say by sponsor, it's the TikiCon sponsor. TikiCon sponsor, yes. Yeah, yeah. No one is sponsoring this show. Right. Although, if you guys... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll, we, take, we'll do all kinds of stuff for rum. We'll and, take bottles of rum, right? Yeah, and we'll, yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll we'll show us or or tequila and or Sarah whiskey, it's, and show us drinking it. Sarah will take our shirts off for you for one case of uh, pineapple Stiggins plantation rum. Oh God, that's expensive. I'm I'm cheaper than that. Uh, well, <laughs> I'd take my shirt off for two bottles. Oh geez, okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Then, then we can, uh, you can have, then it could just be the, the Greg show after uh, the Greg and Justin show. <laughs> <laughs> too hot for, for, too hot for Facebook. Actually, that'd probably get me banned. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Tiva Oriana should be somebody we should get a little video from. Yes, but they can't get together. They might have something already. Well, we have, probably have something already that I could just. True, true, true. Footage. Yeah. So. Um, but I should ask them to, to contribute something. And once we can get still get together, even if the bars and restaurants aren't open yet, we can if they can rehearse or at least get five or six of them together, I will totally yeah. ask them to do a segment. Yeah. Or even if there was just like one of them that was like, here's the, you know, the, the what is the lead, um, uh, her and her and husband. Angie? Yes. Um, have her like show how to do like, in, you know, in five minutes, how to do a couple of different moves. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, just well, like when they pull people well, up. Justin could teach you how to do the dance the hooky though. <laughs> it's been a while. But... I I think I have that video. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> that'd be hilarious. That would be hilarious. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm gonna sign off now because I'm tired of talking. It's been an hour, ten minutes. All right. All right. So goodbye, everyone, and we're gonna leave you with a little clip of some dancing. <laughs>